one thing a little differently um, in competition. I never showed this anywhere before. And that's using the opposite side lapel to set up my worm guard. Because when I'm reaching for one lapel, go ahead, stand up. Let's do it this time. When I'm reaching for one lapel, and people know that I want this lapel, a lot of times they'll try and hide it. And they'll grab it and pull it away from me so I can't reach it. But I don't want to have to switch sides and play worm guard on the opposite side leg because that can be difficult to drill both sides because then you're cutting your time in half for one side. It's better to just get really good at one side. And luckily with worm guard, it doesn't matter if he hides that lapel because I'll still be able to play worm guard to this side no matter what, which is my good side. So instead of grabbing that lapel, I'm just going to grab this lapel. And I'm going to do the exact same setups, okay? Now, so say I wanted to set up worm guard from this. I would take this lapel, I'd put my foot past his hip, I would pass it to ringworm guard, and then I would go to worm guard. And now we're on the same side, lapel worm guard. Okay? This is a variation. This is actually tighter because it puts a lot more pressure on his neck. Because instead of having it cross his body, it goes straight down. And it gives you a lot of torque as far as turning your knee. So now you have a lot more directional force with my knee. I can do, turn him even more. So this is a very good option if you're going to set up uh, ringworm guard, it's the same thing. You just pass to a ringworm position, and now we're here, and you can do all the same techniques, but he's turned even more. Reverse tail worm guard is by far the one that benefits the most from the same side grip. It's the tightest of all, because now when I get this grip here, and I sit up and turn, there's no way he can turn back into me. It's so tight, and this is a really good way to set up uh, the arm bar that I do, which I'm not going to show right now, but we're going to go into it later. And then we set up our same position. So all the techniques can be techniques can be done from the same side lapel grip. Okay. So as we continue on through the worm guard DVD, we're gonna see just how deep the worm hole goes. Okay, so now that we've learned about the same side lapel grip to set up the worm guard position, I'm going to show you a quick entry into it. So if you want to get straight to the chase and attack the same side lapel and really get your worm guard on the next level, I'm going to show you this setup. Okay, so I'm here in an open guard position and I reach for my first worm guard grip and he hides it from me. I no longer have option to grab that. So I'm going to sit up and grab this one. Now. The setup is a little weird because I don't really want to reach and grab it with my cross hand because my base is off and he's able to, he can drive right into me and start stepping over my leg right away. So it's usually better to grab with the left hand here. So my right foot can still be in action, planting on his thigh, stopping him from dropping his weight on me directly. So now, to set up the position, I'm going to swing my body all the way around like I'm doing one of the original lapel sweeps we did from the lapel sweep section. So I, like I'm trying to underhook and spin. Okay, except instead of underhooking this leg, I'm going to reach my arm through this leg. Okay, so I'm here, I'm going to swing, underhook, and I'm just going to pass the lapel to my hand. That's why I underhook so deep. My right foot is in his hip like the worm guard position. I pass the lapel to my hand, and then I swing all the way back and immediately start my worm guard attack. So this is a more advanced setup and entry. It allows you to attack right away and get right into uh, offensive positions without having to deal with a lot of grip switches. Because when you're first starting the worm guard position, there's a lot of passing and switching and switching grips and going like this. But with this same side grip, it allows you to cut right to the chase and get right into a really strong attack without them having a lot of time to set up any counter attacks. So I swing and pass. Swing and pass. And then we swing all the way back around, immediately putting my deep hook to bring him in and attack him back. Okay? Alright, so now we're going into another setup that's very similar to the one we just did, but this time it's with the grip. Okay? So, last time he hid this grip from me. And I was able to grab this grip and set up the reverse Della worm guard or any worm guard with the same side lapel grip. Now, we're going to get our normal grip, but what can happen is if the guy knows I'm going to set up worm guard, he's going to hide this far leg. If he hides that leg back, it can be difficult to reach to it and get the underhook and then pass the lapel through. So, all I'm going to do is when he steps back, I'm going to follow him and continue the sweeping motion through 
and then I pass the grip to my left hand. So it's a very similar idea, but on the same the, the other side, and then I come back right to my swooping position, just like we did with the other one. So I'm facing this way. So I'm here. He hides his leg. I'm trying to reach for it to set a warm guard. I can't. I swing here past the grip. So I'm inverting all the way with keeping my foot past his hip. Pass it to my other hand. Swing back. Insert my Delahiva hook. Extend. Take the back. Okay? Moving on to the next entry. Okay, so in the similar situation now where the guy's hiding his back leg far away from us here, what we're going to do is we want to initiate our worm guard setup, but instead of having to invert through to set up the same side grip, we're just going to bully him back to make him, force him to step. So I'm here and I'm going to lasso my leg. When I lasso my leg, it gives me a really good control over his distance from me because I can pull him in now. I can bring my knee to my chest and it forces him to step. Okay, so as I do that, what I'm actually going to do, especially if he's really far away, I'm going to hook my leg behind his knee. And I pull both my legs in. As I pull both my legs in, I'm going to grab his pants. I don't want to grab the ankle because I can't always count on being able to reach the ankle. I grab the pants, and then as I grab the pants, I kick away again, but I keep a hold of this ankle so he's not allowed to step it back. So when he's not able to step it back like that, he, he's, he's distance away from me, but at an advantageous position for me. And now I sit up. And notice how I sit up, I hook my leg around his leg so he's not able to step back. If I just sit up without the hook, he may step his leg back before I can reach my hook around his knee. So, hide that leg again. Here, like this. I'm going to lasso, pull in tight, hook my instep behind his knee, pull everything in, grab the pants, and then kick him away. Then from here, I sit up, hooking my leg around, and then passing the grip. And now we're in ringworm guard, and we can go to worm guard or reverse double worm guard. So that's another set. Alright, we briefly went over this setup in the beginning, but now I'm going to show you it from a different position. So go ahead and stand up for me, Josh. This time we're going to be standing because all fights start on their feet. So we're actually going to try and set up the worm guard from a standing position. So here, he's standing. I'm going to open his lapel. So if his, if his lapel is tucked into his gi here, the best way to open it is to reach in with my hands, with my thumb down, and I do a swipe. And I swipe it open like that. Just a quick whoosh is usually enough. Once it's open, I grab it, and I like to pull it up to pull the rest of it out of the belt because this skirt will be tucked in the belt. I pull it up and then hang on to it. Now from here, this is really good because if you're not a good judo fighter and you grab this, it's kind of like the white belt defense to judo. If you just grab here, he's not really going to be able to set up a lot of throws or takedowns or anything. So if you hang on to this really tightly, we can just pull guard off of it as well, or we can set up our worm guard, which is going to be like this. I'm going to let go with my left hand, maintaining the grip with my right hand, and I'm going to do a kick. Yeah, like that. Like I'm trying to throw a body kick, but I'm not actually going to kick him. I'm just going to throw it up into his hip. As I throw it up into his hip, I'm going to fall to my right. Okay. As I fall to my right, my left hand is going to come underneath his leg. Watch my left hand here. I go here, and I pass it to my left hand really fast as I fall. Boom. Right into the ringworm guard. From here, we can go shin to shin, do our ringworm guard attacks, worm guard, reverse double worm guard. Okay. So that's another really effective guard pull and set up. So again, throw the leg and pass to my left hand right away. Okay, the next worm guard setup is going to be from a guard pull position already. And now let's talk about just opening the lapel. I like to open the lapel with my feet. That's my favorite thing to do. But it's also equally effective if you're in a sit-up position to use the swipe attack that we just talked about. The swipe attack works really good, but a lot of times when you're sitting in this position, you're vulnerable to a lot of attacks. You can knee cut, 
you can try and do cartwheel passes. He can grab Toriano and immediately go. And if we're set on the defensive too early, it's going to be difficult to set up our worm guard. So what I like to do is play an open guard here. So I have my feet engaged, and I just put my foot inside his lapel just really fast. Set it inside, and then just kick it out. If it doesn't open all the way, I'll just do it again. Then you grab it with your toes. Just kidding. You reach up, grab it with your hand, and now we're immediately going to set it up. This time I'm not going to sit back and then worry about passing it under the leg or anything like that. Passing it to the other hand, doing all that. I'm just here, I sit up, I grab it, and I pass it immediately to my left hand, right into ringworm guard. So if you're trying to set up the worm guard fast, it's good to pass straight to ringworm guard, because then from there we can go to anything we want. But if you worry too much about controlling the lapel here, and then wrapping it around here, and then sitting up here, and then passing it, it's a lot of steps. You can do it, but there are options, right? You gotta try them all, whichever you like the most. Some of the people who know worm guard, they like to go like this. I personally like this faster way of just one quick grip switch, and we're in the position. That's my personal favorite setup. Alright guys, so we've gone over lapel guard, worm guard attacks and sweeps to the back and also just sweeping to top. And we talked about a position where when we sweep, we end up almost in like a leg drag position where the mount is exposed for a second. When that happens, we need to take advantage of it. We don't just want to sit back and give them the um, single leg X guard. Okay. So as we attack it, I need to go right into the mount controlling tightly. So I'm going to show you now how to attack the mount most effectively from there. So the position is we sweep, we end up on top, and we're in this position. This would be from the normal worm guard position, the regular worm guard tilt sweep. Would lead up to here. Okay? Let's turn this way. So I'm here, I end up in this position. I've brought my knees to the proper position. His leg is trapped through to the other side. As long as I keep my weight heavy on him, connecting my butt to his thigh, it's gonna be very difficult for him to pull his knee out. I'm maintaining a tight grip here. Okay. To attack you don't necessarily want to let go of this grip right away. If we let go of it right away, I can attack, but he may be able to bring his knee through. Okay? So I'm going to hang on to this for a while, and I'm going to drive all my weight forward until I'm all the way over the top of him before I let go. As I let go, I need to immediately catch his head as soon as possible. So my hand goes from here to here without giving him any time. So now if he manages to try and bring his leg through, I'm already in such a tight position that I'll be able to drop down and put heavy pressure, and we're in a better position than if he just recovered guard totally, okay? Of course, our first goal is to go straight to mount each time, but sometimes he may recover a little bit, so we need to make sure we're prepared for that by grabbing his head as quickly as possible, okay? Something that can cut down on his ability to recover is if I switch my hands here. I switch to my left hand, and then I'm going to underhook his right arm. By underhooking his right arm, my knee comes across his body a little bit. And then when I let go, I come under the other arm and go straight to mount. So that's from the regular worm guard sweep and the tilt sweep from there. That's the, the attack we want to look for. Okay, so we just went over attacking the mount from the regular worm guard sweep. So when you sweep with the ringworm guard, you end up in similar positions. Like if we do the overhead sweeps, we end up in that same type of position, but we can't push the leg through. So say I sweep him with the ringworm guard sweep, like the overhead one, for instance. So I bring him up and over. I'll do this gently. It's been a long day. So we bring him up and over into this position, OK? So scoot back a little. All right. Go ahead and run it back. Hands go across. So when I'm here in this position, it's going to be very hard for me to actually attack mount because his knee is going to be right in the way. So when we sweep into this position, our main goal is to back step with this leg. So I'm just going to put my hand in his collar here to control myself. I put my knuckles on his chest here, and I keep my weight low. And as I keep my weight low, I'm going to trick him. He thinks I'm still grabbing his lapel, but I'm going to let go and grab his pant. Okay? So it's like this. I have the grip. I drop my weight low, like I'm trying to maintain my base. But what I'm really doing is letting go and grabbing his pants. Once I grab
grab his pants here. I push down as I extend up. I bring my leg across in a long step type situation. It's very important that I push down before I step up. Because if I just step up, he may be putting pressure and just follow my leg. And I'm not going to be able to long step as easily. So I push down, extend down hard, then step up and long step. Pass that position. Okay? One more time. Have the lapel. Switch. Step. Okay? Next one. Start over. Alright, so we're in this position again, and we swept with the ringworm guard, whatever sweep we may have done, and we come up on top like this. Now, instead of squatting down and doing the long step this time, I'm just going to turn my knee in and long step while maintaining the grip on the leg. One, th one thing beneficial about maintaining the grip on the leg is that now, if he tries to turn into me, we can attack the back, like we did with that, uh, that uh, tilt sweep, passing the guard like we did. So. You don't always have to grab his pants. But here, when you grab like this, and we go to the long step, I actually want to plant my hand on the mat as I maintain the grip here. Then if he turns into me, make the hook and attack the back. And now we're going to talk about it after the reverse Della Worm guard after we sweep. <coughs> so we're just going to do pick a sweep from the reverse Della Worm guard that isn't a back attack. So I'm here, come like this, I come here, and then say I hit the ankle, and I sweep him over. Go back a little. So with this one, it's a little bit different. It's a similar position, but my hand is on the outside here, okay? So this would be where we work from Worm guard. This would be where we work from ringworm guard, but this is the reverse Della worm guard sweeping position. So from here, you can attack the mount in the same way that we attack from the worm guard, but I find it's better to actually attack the back from here. So what I'm going to do is just maintain this grip really tight, and I'm going to underhook, and I'm going to walk up and grab inside his collar, the horse collar grip. As I grab in the horse collar grip, I'm going to chuck it past my body, and I'm grabbing at the collar and at the knee, and I'm just going to sit back. To attack the back here. Now what's nice about this position is you don't necessarily have to throw the second hook in because if he defends the second hook with his hand blocked, go ahead like cup the bottom of my foot, you know how they defend. If he's here cupping the bottom of my foot, it's okay. Because of the way we're set up, I'm actually in a perfect bow and arrow position here. I can start to attack the collar and instead of grabbing the pants like I would with a normal bow and arrow, I'm just going to continue my grip on the lapel here. Okay. So I get my grip as I'm going to attack. He's blocking with his hand, and I'm just going to sit over and attack the bow and arrow choke, finishing just like that. Okay? One more time. I'll do the full sweep. So this can be done from the wormado position as well. Let's turn this way. So as I set up my wormado sweep here. Sweep him over. We're in this position. I'm going to underhook. Grab the collar. Bring my knee to his back. This is a chair sit technique. Start to attack the back. He's defending. I reach to the collar. Bring my foot across and attack the bone arrow. Of course, we want to take the back first if we can, but if for whatever reason we can't put the hook in, we can attack the bone arrow here. And this is a really tight choke. Alright guys, so that leads us into our submissions portion of the worm guard. Now, the submissions from worm guard, there are opportunities to take them as you attack the back. Of course, you use worm guard to take the back, you use worm guard to take the mount, and then submissions are going to present themselves. But 
there are a couple options we can take when our opponent tries to defend in certain ways that open them up for a submission attack. The first and my favorite being from the reverse del worm guard here. When I get the reverse del worm guard position, my opponent knows that I need to put this leg through to the de la Giva or to swing the leg around to get to the worm nado. So if he wants to stop me from going here, a lot of times they'll grab the pants like so to stop me from being able to bring my leg. So they're stiff arming here and if they do that, it's also going to stop me from being able to spin around and they're killing my momentum to go either direction. So when this happens, the counter to it is to swing your leg out and catch at the elbow. So turn this way a little. So here, swing the leg out, just like I'm doing a worm nato, but instead of swinging my leg out to the, like this, which I won't be able to get any momentum, I swing up to my shoulders, bring my knee in. Very important detail. I bring my knee in, and that forces his arm to go right under my armpit. Turn a little more. So as you'll see here, instead of coming out, I bring my knee out and in, catching the arm, and then coming over the face and extending outwards, twisted underneath the arm bar. So here he grabs, I swing, catch, I'm grabbing the gi here, I break the grip, come over the face, and then rotate my head all the way to the outside to finish the arm walk. Okay. Grip. Catch. Extend. You can also finish it without spinning, just being right here and extending. And I've hit that one in competition at the Nationals. Um, it's very effective and very fast. I think it's a really nice display of jiu-jitsu. Okay, the next one is going to be from the same reverse Della Worm position, but this time it's when we're attacking the Worm Nado, okay? So, we get into the reverse Della Worm. He's not grabbing my ankle, let's say, but when I grab here and I invert, let's say as I come forward, he bases really hard. Yes, he bases. I'm not able to elevate him forward anymore. All I'm going to do is continue the forward motion, but instead of trying to launch him, I'm going to use that motion to turn in and lock my knee up into his head and start locking up the triangle. So how that works, here I grip, I pull forward and he bases, my knee is going to go to the right side of his head, see how my thigh goes around the outside of his head, it pinches in and as it pinches in I'm going to let go of the lapel with my right hand and turn to the side, connect my legs together, bring the arm across, and finish the triangle choke, however you'd like to finish. One time, here, grip. Now, let's say we don't want to actually invert all the way. You can use this just to set up a normal triangle. So if I'm here, I can grip thumb up this time instead of thumb down. And we're not actually doing the full wormado, but we're just going to kind of fake it and launch it and use this grip to pull him in to us so we can get the triangle from there. It's the same motion, but without as much commitment. One more time. Here, we just have to make sure we make it over his arm and hook our leg. Lock up the chart. Alright guys, we're going to go into the next submission opportunity. This time it's going to be from the ringworm guard. Okay. We set up our ringworm guard with one of the many setups that we taught here today. Whichever one you like the most is the one you should do. So we're here in the ringworm guard position. Let's rotate to the other side so you can see the detail. Okay. I'm here in the ringworm guard position. And I'm going to grab the collar here. And as I bring him forward to elevate, I'm going to extend my leg through. As I extend my leg through, I'm maintaining the grip here behind his knee so he can't escape. And I'm going to put my foot in the hip. Not reaping, but just putting our foot in the hip, almost like a single leg X position. 
Once I'm here, I'm going to maintain my grip on his collar with my right hand. I'm going to let go of the lapel here, and I'm going to reach to the toes. As I reach to the toes, my foot can travel up his side of his ribs, but it cannot go past uh, the line of his hip here. I don't want it to reach. So I can go into his armpit here. You can see, you still see my toes, so it's not a full reach. Then I'm going to bring my right hand over and under. Make sure my thumbs go with the rest of my fingers in a monkey grip style so you don't hurt your thumb. Connect here. And now, when we finish the toe hold, we don't just want to crunch our feet, or our hands in to hurt his foot. We want to twist our body, turning to our right, and then curl in like we're trying to put his, our, his toes towards his butt. There. Okay. One more time. Here. Bring one in position. Elevate. Extend. Left foot comes across. Right knee foot comes through and pinches. My right knee pinches. I reach to the toes. Grab the toe hold by connecting my hands together in this figure four. And then I curl my abs up and twist and drive his toes towards his butt. One more time. Okay guys, the next submission is going to come to the reverse double arm guard. This is a knee bar. Okay. Over here please, Josh. So, I get into my reverse double arm guard position, and I'm going to swing around like I'm doing the wormnado again, but this time, we want to make sure our foot is all the way through, I'm going to grab the heel. As I grab the heel, I'm going to bring my right knee through, to put pressure on his knee here, see how he immediately falls? Come back up. From here, I bring my knee through and I rotate on my neck and shoulders until my head escapes the other side. I need to make sure I cup his ankle really tight here so that as I extend, he falls. Now I can maintain the grip on his lapel if I want. Once he's down in this position, I'm just going to let go and knee bar. Okay. Again, from this side. Forward. <laughs> Here, I go inverted for the worm, the reverse double worm. I swing my leg through, cup the ankle, and then I extend my hips into him and fall back. Keeping the grip on the lapel for a little bit will help you tighten up the position. Then when you're ready to finish, both hands go to the ankle and extend. From a similar position, we're going to attack the half slicer. Okay? On this side, please, Joshua. Reverse Della Worm Guard again. I'm going to get this position here. As I go to invert, I'm going to bring my leg through. I hook onto it here. I'm make sure my heel's not cracked. I hook onto it and I'm going to grab the pants. As I grab the pants, I can take him forward or backwards, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take him forward to this situation, here, once I'm in this position, I'm going to drive up, putting pressure on his knee, calf, to finish the calf slice. One more time. So here, spin through, make sure my heel is all the way through, I grab the ankle, and I throw my hook behind his knee bring my ankle down behind his knee. I want to make sure my arm is on the inside. That's a key detail. If I leave my arm on the outside, it's going to be difficult to reach his pants. So I bring my arm on the inside, grab inside the pants, drive him forward. Once we're here, we're in almost like a 50-50 position, but my knee is escaped. I want to come under his leg, grab the collar, drive in. There's a lot of torque on his knee and calf there. Okay, now we're going to go to the next
exhibition, which is going to be in Umapada. This time we're going to be from the ringworm guard here, like so. Now, my goal here is to pull him forward. As I pull him forward, I'm going to bring my hand on the inside and force his hand to the mat here. As I force his hand to the mat, I extend my leg on the shin to shin, and I push and turn. Okay? Very important I extend the leg, because I'm not going to be able to bring the umupada if his knee is driving through. So he feels like he may be able to get a strong knee cut here. It's almost like I'm giving him the underhook knee cut. So the second I extend my leg and push on the neck, he's going to be in a very bad spot. Grabbing right behind the tricep, and as I turn my hand over, that's what's going to give me the umupada action here. Throw the leg up and over. Once I have it up and over, my hand is conveniently in the collar already. So it's going to be very difficult for him to just stand up and shake out of the umupada. If I don't have the collar grip, he would be able to just stand right up, no problem. But because my hand is in the collar here, it's going to be very difficult for him to just stand up. Then to finish, we can finish however you like to finish the umupada. I like to underhook the leg and turn this way to finish. Okay? Do it from this angle. So I'm in the ringworm guard, shin to shin. I pull him forward. As I pull him forward and he bases, I weave my hand to the outside and extend the leg. I extend my shin on his shin and throw the leg over the top. As I throw it over the top, I get my strong grip here. Lock my legs together. Make sure my hand is here ready to block if he tries to jump over. Catch him at the hip. Then we can escape. We can start setting up all sorts of umapata stuff. If you're interested in Umapada stuff, you can check out the Umapalooza, which is our Umapada DVD coming soon by Entrepreneur. One more time. Grip. He bases. I extend. Throw the Umapada. Catch the position. And we're in a nice Umapada. Okay, when we're talking about sweeping into attacking positions from the worm guard, we're going to go over one from the regular worm guard position. Go ahead and come on top, please, just so I can show the full movement. So this is one that kind of came into existence near the beginning of worm guard, during the genesis period of worm guard. So when I'm here, I'm going to just do a regular sweep, the regular worm guard sweep, tilt them back, like so. Okay, so scoot back this way a little. So here, we sweep, tilt into this like double guard pull position. Now this is an important position to be aware of because it's not always easy to come right on top because a lot of people, they may try and grab your pants with your right hand and stop me from coming on top. And if I do come on top, the second I let go, they're going to try and barrel me back over. So in situations like these, it's important to have a barambolo option. Okay? So what I'm going to do to do the barambolo option is I'm going to rotate my elbow up over his knee, high up like this. I bring it high up. This serves the purpose of blocking his knee from being able to push through to the single leg X position. I'm going to drive into him and turn both knees down. As I turn both knees down, I need to donkey kick my right leg through, just a little bit, just so my knee is on the center of his stomach. That's very important. If you don't bring that through, the barren bowl is not going to work as well. So I push my knee through. Now I'm going to roll to my right shoulder like I'm doing a barren bolo, except I'm not torquing on my neck. It's actually easier than a burn bowl because you don't have to invert on your body. So I roll here. Reach it. My personal favorite is to bring my leg here on his leg and use that to force him over. Okay. Sometimes I'll even use my foot. And when I do that, it allows me to throw my hook in really fast here. And once I do that, I grab the hip and I finish the burn bowl. So there's a couple different options from there. We can go over a couple of them. So I'm here. My foot is through like this. Now I'm here. When I bring my leg over like this, when I'm in this position, yes, I can do that way I just did, but you can also grab his pants here, pull his knees together, lock our ankles, let go of the lapel here, and force him over that way. Kind of like a Hoffa Mendez style barambolo here. Or there's a third option which is when we grip like this and our leg is over, we switch our hands, get up to our elbow, and push up and across to 
attack the mount from the Barambola there. So if you're interested in Barambola, just look online and learn how to Barambola, but all of the Barambola opportunities work pretty well from the Warren Guard, which is cool, because they're two tricky guards that kind of fit into each other really well. Okay, so now we're going to go over some common defensive encounters. The first being when our opponent tries to push her foot down and step over, which is very common and you see a lot of people teaching that on YouTube and various sites saying that's how to counter the worm guard. It's not that big of a deal. There's a couple things we can do to deal with the situation. The first is as we set up the position and we go to our ringworm guard to set it up, a lot of times people will try and start stepping over immediately. If you feel that happening, go back, go slow. If you feel them reaching back, all you need to do is grab their elbow. If you grab the elbow and pull down, it's going to be much harder for them to do it. Okay? If he continues to try, go ahead and keep trying to push back, I can turn my toes out as well. The farther I turn my toes out, the harder it's going to be for him to step over because I can extend and he's not going to be able to get the leverage of bending my knee down because my knee's not going to bend sideways unless he breaks it somehow, which he's not going to be able to do. So I turn my knee, my toes outwards. You can see here, my toes are out. He tries to push on it. It's not going to work. And in that motion, then, when he's trying to pull, I can reach and grab on the inside to break that grip, or, go ahead and continue, I can grab on the outside to pull. And then, look, we can have this good grip control. We can go to our ringworm guard positions and start sweeping in various ways. Okay? If he does manage to step over my leg, we're not going to panic. Okay? I, all I need to do is switch either to my regular worm guard position. You can even go reverse Della worm guard. But we have to switch into like a, a reverse uh, Della Kiva position. But when you go regular worm guard, it's important that I sit all the way around his body as much as possible. The more I sit around his body, the less control he's going to have over my leg because he's not going to keep his feet too close together or he's going to get swept. So when he steps his leg out to defend the sweep, I'm just going to put my foot right back. Once that happens, then I can recover the position and get to a comfortable place. Okay? So those are the first couple of defenses to common counters. In, okay, so I'm here, like so. I'm in the ring guard position. He pushes the foot over. Now, when this happens, I'm going to use this foot on the inside to elevate him forward. I fall back and I elevate and I make him plant with his hands, both hands this time. So when he plants with his hands here, I'm going to need to take him at this side angle so he plants to the right of me, off to the side where my free hand is. From here, I'm going to grab inside the elbow on the the, the cleat of his gi here, right above his tricep. From there, I'm going to extend my legs, I'm going to let go, and I'm going to use that to stand up, forcing his hand to the mat so he can't lift off the ground. Then from there, we attack the back. Pretty simple, really. Try again. I set up the position, he steps over. I use that to tilt him forward, grab on the elbow, let go, stand up. Then we're in a seatbelt turtle position, we can start attacking the back. Box jokes, whatever you want. Set up my position. I may be able to get full into my position, but then he steps back and steps over. If this happens, I need to reach underneath his armpit with my free hand. I'm going to invert under, just like I'm doing a kiss of the dragon position, okay? So I bring my knee inside, and my arm that was on the armpit is going to come behind his knee. Then both legs push him forward, and we grab inside the pants and start to attack the back. Yeah! Something like that. Okay, try again. In this position here. He steps back and steps over my leg. I reach underneath the armpit. This does two things. One, it's going to help me turn. And two, it's going to block him from being able to catch my head. If he catches my head and starts putting pressure here, we're going to be in a bad spot. So I need to bring my hand on the inside. Invert. Left hand goes behind the knee. Left knee follows my elbow there behind the knee. And then we extend. And attack the kiss of the dragon from the worm part. Just like that. So that's one more common defense encounter. 
If we can shut down people stepping over. Playing worm guard or trying to set up the position and the person stands straight up to try and break the grip. We'll go ahead and stand up, go on this side. So this can be as I'm grabbing the grip or it can be after I already have the grip. But sometimes people stand straight up, like posturing up like this. So I can't pass the grip through, okay? If this happens and they manage to break your grip and you end up in this position, uh, the flaw in his posture is that he brought both ankles to me. And that's, he's not going to be able to stand up straight if this leg is back. So if he's have that leg back, he's not going to be able to stand up straight. I can set up my position, no problem. If he postures up really hard here and he's tall, I'm going to have a hard time hanging on to him. So all I'm going to do is redirect both my hands to his ankles and I just extend back for the howdy doody sweep. You gotta do that with momentum and try and come on top as it happens. Let's show you what that looks like. Here, I'm gripping like so, he postures, I kick, and come right on top. Really simple, basic. You can't be afraid to let go of the worm guard to take advantage of your opponent's counter. Because once we become proficient in holding lapels and using the setups, all we need is to get a grip on the lapel and then we're gonna get the worm guard.